Good afternoon to each and every one of you, and praise God once more that we're able to come together. Uh, I pray in one day that we'll be able to meet together and with open doors of the church, praise God. If not, Lord willing, maybe we'll even make it to the open doors of what God has given us. So, before we get into this tonight, let's uh, let's just let's pray for our land. Let's pray for um, each and every one that's in this. I'm, uh, you know, we're seeing so much darkness on our land, and uh, we're, we're going to get into that tonight. So, but let's pray that the light will prevail, that it's going to come out, and that we are going to shine forth this light in being a magnifying glass, that God would shine it through us, and that we, we would be able to just get these lost souls in before it's too late. Let's keep praying for um, the, the things that are going on even overseas in our own country, too. You know, we have, we've got a lot of things going on, and God forbid that that we leave on this account that we can do something for God and praise Him and give Him honor and glory. So let's pray for all the churches across the land. Our uh, Pastor David, um, Sister Joy, um, uh, Pastor Doug, and Sister Mary Jane. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank here, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but praise God, all the ministers across the land because they are getting hit hard, every one of them. I mean, you get hit hard each time that you try to preach or teach God's Word. But praise God, His Word will go forth and it will not come back void. So let us give Him honor and give Him glory. And let's praise Him and touch all the ones that uh, that are sick and afflicted that have asked for, for prayer. And I pray, God, just please, let's pray that they can get back in church. That the church doors will be open and continually open. That each and every one of us would make our way to those doors. Whether it be the Sparta Church of God that we go to, or whether it be the closest one to you that preaches that King James Version and the love of Jesus Christ. And by the love of Jesus Christ, I mean the full truth of His Word. So let us pray tonight. Let us pray earnestly for this country, for our land, for the people, for the world that's in it as far as the people goes. Because we need to turn around. We need Jesus Christ. Praise God. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I praise your precious name, God, once more, Lord God. I just bow my head, God, before you, Lord God, Father, that thou would come, God, to the throne of grace, God, that my, I may be obtain mercy, Father, in time of need, Lord. And God, Lord God, this is a time of need, God. Father, as we come to you, Father, asking you, Lord God, for the answers, Lord God, knowing, God, that men do not have the answers and do not have anything, Lord God, that we need, Father. But what we need, God, is we need to be rooted and just like a tree that's planted near the water father i pray god that we get our roots and that our roots are sunk in deep in your word father and that and that bible lord god and that king james version lord god that it is pure lord god unto you god that it comes flowing god as a mighty rushing river and lord god help us lord father that we hold the magnifying glass father that we are the workers father we are the harvesters lord god and are ready father just as you'd shown us father lord god that it is ready that the harvest is ready father that but we need the ones that are going to reap the harvest god for you so lord god i pray god you help us lord guide us god in this last day and time father that the the lost and undone god and the people god of this world god would see the true love of jesus christ that it is correction it is the proof and it is it all that we need to have in this life that is everything in the key to eternal life and not eternal death lord help us god in each and every way god to praise you to thank you lord God, as we as we come to you once more, God, I pray, God, that you touch our church family, Lord. God, the ones, God, that are mentioned, Lord, God, the ones, God, that are sick and afflicted, Father, I, mean, I pray, God, each and every one, God, are able just to bust those doors open wide once more, God, and, Father, give a testimony, God, unto you, Father, praising and glorifying and magnifying your name. Lord, help us all, God, and, Father, I pray, God, that you touch our pastor, God, and, and, uh, 
the ministers, their wives, Lord God, in each and every way, God, that you touch us all, Father. Lord God, that we may be a light, God, Father, for you. And Lord God, that we take nothing from it. But God, give all the glory and honor to you, Father. So I pray, God, that not, Father, you remove me from the side. And help me, Lord God, in each and every way, Father, that I give you all the honor and the glory and the praise, God. That it is not about me, but, Father, it is totally about your Son, Jesus Christ, and what he done for us on the cross. And, Lord God, let us do this in remembrance of him, Father, that we go forth, God, for you. In Christ's name I do pray. Amen. So tonight, we're going to pick up at the very front and go straight to the middle. So, it'll be, it's, it's one verse in Genesis chapter 1 and 4. And uh, most of the part will actually be in Luke chapter 1. So, I'll give you a second. And uh, like I said, Genesis chapter 1 will just only be for one verse in, chapter, in verse 4. But it will be in uh, Luke chapter 1 mostly. Alright, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 4. And God saw the light, that it was good. He's talking about the light here. And God divided the light from the darkness. This is not the only place that you're going to find in the Bible that God separated the light from the darkness. When his son was hanging on that cross, there was a separation. Now listen, in Mark chapter 15 and 32 through 34, let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him revile him, or reviled him. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried in a loud voice, saying, Elo, Eli, Lama, Shabbatana, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Thinking of what had to happen right there. Thinking that the darkness fell upon the land, that the light was separated from the darkness there once more. We are seeing these things today. And God is crying out to us to make sure that we're separating ourselves from this darkness of this land. Let's go on to Luke chapter 1 before I just spill it all out in four verses here. So in Luke chapter 1, we're talking about John here. And I, I'm not going to go all the way into the first of it because I... I really wanted to teach the whole thing. God told me 59 and blow. But Lord willing, we're going to come back to it. So, In Luke chapter 1 and verse 59. But I want you to remember what we just talked about up there. We're going to come back to it again. In Luke chapter 1 and verse 59. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child. The child... We're getting ready to find out, but um, Zacharias, they are too old, in other words. Their time has, for them to have a child, their time has, has slipped away. But as we know God, God can do anything, God can work anything, that we would be faithful unto Him. But know that Zacharias, when he went into the temple, and uh, the angel coming to him, I want to touch on this briefly. An angel come upon him and explained to him what was going to happen. He told the angel told Zacharias that he was going to have a son, and he was going to have to name that son John. Zacharias didn't believe him. Zacharias did not believe the angel that came to him. And you know what happened? He was not able to speak until he saw this, that it was finished. We're coming back to that here in a minute. In verse 59, it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child. And they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. That's wrong, right? Verse 60. 
And the mother answered and says, Not so, but he shall be called John. And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. I'm going to throw something in here. It don't cost you a thing. Tradition needs to be out the front door, the back door, the window, wherever you can throw it. Because the only thing that we need is we need to follow Christ. The tradition there was to name it after the Father and His line of family because it is the Son. Now, God told him and sent an angel to tell him, to tell them that, hey, you call this baby John. Throw that out the window and accept what God is telling you. Follow exactly what he's saying. That we would not be the ones that say, that doesn't believe, that doesn't believe it's God. You know, just, to, just as the story goes, and I'm, I can't remember, I'm horrible at remembering names, but the earthquake come, everything come, the storm, but the soft, small, still voice, and that was God. We need to get familiar with that voice, because right here, they needed to get familiar with it, and they stood up to give exactly what God asked of them. And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. In verse 62, And they made signs to his father uh, how he would have him called. Excuse me. And he asked for a writing table and wrote saying, His name is John. And they marveled all. And his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed and spake and praised God. Now before we go on, I want you to think about something. He was quiet. God quietened him. Because he did not necessarily believe that these things were going to come to pass because he's like, how was that? You know, it's just like... Uh, Sarah and Abraham. Sarah laughed. Like, she yeah, right. You know? He did not believe either. Let us go on before I get into that. Uh, talking about him, uh, his mouth was opened immediately and his tongue loosed and he spake and praised God. And fear came on all that dwelt round about them and all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, and he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised of our fathers and to remember this holy covenant. Now, God silenced this man. Now this man is plumb full of the Holy Ghost of God and speaking out just as God would have him to. God separated that darkness from the light. By separating those two, he allowed the light to shine. And by doing that, he allowed John to come in this world to make a pathway that everyone would focus on Jesus Christ and would know who Jesus Christ was. That John would go out and preach and teach and show these people that Jesus Christ, their Savior, is coming. He separated the light from the dark once more. Let us keep going. The oath which is, verse 73, the oath which we swear to our fathers, father Abraham that he would grant unto us that being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. 
in holiness and righteousness, there's fear again. I can't help but say it. There is fear once more. We've heard that so many times. Sister Dorothy, she was on fire for that, and she was rightfully so to be. God showed her something. She threw tradition out the door too and done exactly what God had asked her to do. Let us go on. But without fear, let us go on and proceed. In holy, in verse 75, In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives, and thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the high, highest. For thou shalt go forth the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins, through the tender mercies of God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness. And in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel. That don't want to make you shout. want to make you go home. I don't know what will. Because right here it tells us just what John was raised up and prepared to do. Let me ask you this. I know he talks about John being the greatest one of all right below Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the greatest one of all. What are we called to do? Are we not of the same? Do we not partake of the same flesh? Are we not man too? Because we feel pain. We understand when we get pinched. Are we not called to do the same thing? Should we not separate ourselves from the darkness that our light would shine even further? He talks about on the... Oh, man, I don't even... I just want to drill blank. Move on. But it talks about how that there... You know, the separate of how... If your eye would be just a little bit of darkness in it or just have a little bit of light in it and how great is that darkness inside of you if you can only see just a little bit of light let us cleave to that light and let us push away that darkness because just as brother David was singing and has sung before and I know this is the song that is talking about Paul's ministry and it says I counted on Adam I counted on Cain I counted on Jonah, but he was the same. I counted on Judas, but he proved untrue. Now go tell the world, Paul, I'm counting on you. You're Paul. I am Paul. That we need to be just like this. That we would. Listen to this once more. I'm starting at 77. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Only one way to get that remission of your sins is that's by Jesus Christ. His blood. Now John ain't going to be able to do nothing for you here. John can point you in the right direction just as we can point you in the right direction. But ultimately you have the choice to know that Jesus Christ died on Calvary died on that cross for you gave his blood that we could have remission of our sins that we were saved by his sins and he didn't stop there he didn't stop by dying on the cross he rose on the third day and he is sitting at the right hand of the father making intercession for you and I he's sitting there saying God help help my children help these ones that are in need we're there, church. We are in a world that is full of dark, full of dark things. Me and another guy was talking about it the other day. You know, you to your left and to your right, these things that they're saying in the Bible that is an abomination, that is a sin. They're to your left or to your right. Don't let the darkness overcome you and separate yourself from that darkness. 
and 78, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring on high hath visited us, to give them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Church, we've been guided into the way of peace. It's plumb time we take a hold of this. It's time that we grab a hold of what God has for us. That we're sitting there with the, the biggest magnifying glass you can ever find. That the light that shines from God and the light that shines from Jesus Christ, that we magnify it and let this world know that there is only one answer to every one of these problems. And that's Jesus Christ. And as you see how the separation, that God separated it even from the very beginning, He separated light and dark. Well, guess what? When the day comes and the final door is shut on the gates of hell and the beast is through in and the devil is there with him, that darkness is separated from the light. And the light will be eternal. So will the darkness though. So you have a choice. That we can either continue to try to feed on that darkness. And let the lust and, and, the, and the devil try to come in among those lusts. And allow him to openly come in. Or you can shut that door. And make sure you are in the light. And, and pray, Lord Jesus, separate me from this darkness. And let me focus on your light. And let me be an eternal light for you. That I would join you in heaven. Let's pray before we, before we close tonight. And uh, just praise God in each and every way that we was able to, to do this once more. I pray, Lord will, maybe soon we can open them church doors up and do it the old fashioned way. But praise God either way. If God or Jesus comes back before then, then praise the Lord. I'm ready and, and sealed, ready to go. And we need to pray, Lord Jesus, if so, come quickly. Dear Heavenly Father, I praise your precious name, God, once more. Lord God, Father, you tell us and you've shown us so many ways and so many times, Lord God, where the darkness is separated from the light. Lord God, help us, Lord God, to know, God, that we, it is time we stand for you. And Lord God, that we stand for the light, God, not portraying ourselves to be anything near or close to the darkness, Lord. Father, Lord God, I pray, God, that we seek you. And Father, we seek you so diligently, Lord God, that you remove any aspect of the darkness from us. And Lord God, let us, Father, let us go out into this world, God, full of light, Lord God, that this people, that, that, that your people that may not even come to know you yet, but Father, that will. Lord God, let them see, God, this light, Lord God, that we may say or do something, Lord God, that they would come back and say, Lord God, that is the Jesus Christ. That's the one that we need. Lord, help us all, Father, in this last day. Lord God, as they are all hungry, Lord God, they look for one thing they can't figure out. They do not know what that one thing is. Let them feel that one thing with the only completeness, which is Jesus Christ. Help us, God. Help us, Lord, Father, to look unto you, the author, the finisher of our faith. And Lord God, help us, God. Lord God, that our faith not waver. That we believe, God, what you have said and what you are putting forth in front of us, Lord. And that still small voice, Lord God, that we remember it all the way. Help us, God, in this last day and time. Once more, Father, as we come unto you. In Christ's name I do pray. Amen.